Wayne is looking like, oh, well, you know, when I got shot, black cops walked past me and a white cop helped me out. So from that one incident, basically fuck all black folks. Unless it affects me personally, like Katrina. It affected his family, so all of a sudden, he cares. But since people he don't know getting shot don't, uh, don't affect him or anybody in his immediate family, all of a sudden it doesn't mean anything. So, you know, he, he's not using his voice correctly. So, you know, when niggas do shit like that, they get taken out. He's getting dragged through social media and people really not going to fuck with him. So all those, all those people that were sticking up for him, his core fans that were like, hey, you know, uh, fuck Birdman, blah, blah, blah. You see, they turning their back on him now. You turn your back on the people, we turn our back on you too. All right, so I'm here with John Martin. You call him. Uh, we consider you, consider you the voice of the city. You know what I'm saying? Very opinionated brother. Uh, always has a lot to say at your own business, 715 Media, right? Correct. Right. Right. And uh, and promoter, right? Correct. All right. Um, today I want to talk about uh, about the T.I. Lil Wayne situation. So recently, you know, of course we know Lil Wayne was on Nightline on ABC, and uh, he had some things to say about uh, Black Lives Matter. Um, obviously, he was he pretended to be oblivious of uh, Black Lives Matter and what that movement stood for, and uh, Ti decided to come in and write an open letter on Instagram and you know basically publicly G check Lil Wayne. Um, in your opinion, was Ti was he wrong for doing that, or or you know do celebrities like Lil Wayne need to be G checked uh, publicly when asked about racial issues, especially during a time like this? Yeah, he did. You know, um, he took it to a public forum. I don't understand exactly what he's promoting because generally when an artist takes an interview from anybody, like a major media source, like a Vlad TV or a Breakfast Club or ABC, you know, something like that, they're generally getting ready to promote an album or a big tour. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing that he's getting ready to come out with a book. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but nobody knows about it now because that's what they stuck with. That was that was the that was the shocker for what he said for a man that came out and said the things that he said about President Bush during Hurricane Katrina. And he's been recently video recorded at his concerts screaming Black Lives Matter. And then you get to that interview and you say something like, what is Black Lives Matter? Of course you need to be G checked, especially when you completely going against the grain of your friend T.I. He's been marching in Black Lives Matter protests across Atlanta, stopping the highway and all this stuff, making songs about it. And then you come out like, fuck that. So he feel like, oh, well, you kind of throwing slight at me, too, on top of all the black people that have been supporting your ass for the last 20 years. So it's like, since you said that publicly, I'm going to tell you something publicly, but I'm going to tag your ass in it. It's like. You know, on a friendship level, he probably could have been like, hey, man, I'm going to hit you up and I'm, I'm going to call him about it. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm going to call you about it. But he said, I've been doing this publicly. You said this publicly. So I'm going to go right at you because you're supposed to be my boy. Now, if it was another nigga he wasn't closely connected with, he probably wouldn't have said nothing. But it's like, you know what? No, I'm going to come at you. So, yeah, he deserved that G-check. He completely deserved it. Man, and you know what? To be fair, I mean... You know, Wayne's been rapping since he was, since he was you know, 13, 14 years old. He's been rich for a long time, since he was 16 at least. Right. Now, he signed up to be a rapper. Yeah. He never signed up to be an advocate for, for Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. He never signed up to be a voice of the people. Wayne has always stayed in, stayed in his own lane. But so, Wayne also knows the history of hip-hop. When you have that voice and you reach that level, you're supposed to be somebody for others to look up to. He knows that. That's his responsibility. Jay-Z took it the right way. Look at him. A lot of people early on in his career, you know, although he reached um, a high level uh, of, of success in hip hop, he also knew he had a voice. And even though people hated him, he stayed with the message. He was giving people the game on um, making it as a rapper or just as a businessman or in the streets. He always gave you the game. He didn't care what you said about him. So Wayne is looking like, oh, well, you know, when I got shot, 
black cops walk past me and a white cop helped me out. So from that one incident, basically fuck all black folks. Unless it affects me personally, like Katrina. It affected his family, so all of a sudden, he cares. But since people he don't know getting shot don't, uh, don't affect him or anybody in his immediate family, all of a sudden it doesn't mean anything. So, you know, he, he's not using his voice correctly. So, you know, when niggas do shit like that, they get taken out. He's getting dragged through social media and people really not going to fuck with him. So all those, all those people that were sticking up for him, his core fans that were like, hey, you know, uh, fuck Birdman, blah, blah, blah. You see, they turning their back on him now. You turn your back on the people, we turn our back on you too. So, yeah, that, I mean, that's what happens. You not using your voice the way you're supposed to use it. You're, you're, you're supposed to use it for positive change. Where regardless if it actually happens or not, people can always look back at your career and say, he did what he was supposed to do. So, I mean, even with a guy like T.I. who has a history of what some will consider glorifying drugs, glorifying street culture, um, some people would even say being misogynistic, even though he's, he's turned his image around to be a family man and we've, we've seen T.I. Progressive, progress, progress throughout the years and whatnot, mm -hmm. Does it take anything away from the message that, that T.I. currently stands for and that he and that he gave to Lil Wayne, even though he may have had his past in, in the street life, you know, because we got we got to hold everybody accountable in, in situations like this. Absolutely. You do have to hold everyone accountable for their actions. You absolutely do. But we knew who I, we knew who T.I. was from the get go. We knew who he was from the get go. We knew who, uh, we knew who or we thought we knew who Wayne was from the get go. He's proven to be otherwise. But at the same time, we're looking at growth from T.I., from him making dumb decision after dumb decision, getting caught with all these guns, then being on parole. Now he in the car with his girl and they get called popping X pills, just stupid shit after stupid shit. And he's just like, all right, I'm really going to grow this time. He ain't been arrested since, you know, after the second stint to prison, which was actually here in Arkansas. You know, he said, fuck it, I'm going to be on a reality show with my family now. I mean, he's really growing up, so he's showing growth. Meanwhile, Wayne is showing regression. So it's just like, yeah, this is what you did in your past, but look at how far you've come. That's why we don't hold that against him. He's showing growth.